Welcome, welcome to our Ash Wednesday service. Ash Wednesday is the first day of the 40 days of Lent leading to Good Friday and Easter. 40 is a biblical number and it signifies a time of inner preparation, a time of inner cleansing, a time of struggle and testing too especially as there are obstacles, burdens, issues, mistakes, frustrations, or even a a hopelessness in us. We need to bring before God for release, for healing, for a new experience of freedom, fullness, clarity, purpose, peace. May this time of worship Open a door for you, a door that maybe hasn't opened in a while or hasn't opened before, a new door. May this time of worship be such a time and the beginning of this season, this journey through the next 40 days. So now, let us worship God together. Let us come together now with our call to worship, which you can find in your digital bulletin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. For you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a humble spirit a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. We'll join together now in song with hymn number 33, According to Thy Steadfast Love. together now in prayer with our prayer of approach. Eternal one, you are forever and always. We are here, 
Created with care, we are surrounded by your constant love. We are here. We do not know everything, but we are certain of your truth and light. We are here. Made from dust, we shall return to dust, but always remain in the hands of our Maker. We gather today as we are, Lord, some of us isolated and lonely, some of us confused and anxious, some of us angry and fearful, some of us in need of peace and comfort. We gather because we know we cannot stay in one place forever. And so we have come to prepare for a journey, a journey with you as our guide, our star, our lamp. We find hope in your presence, courage in your strength, wisdom in your truth. We are here to invite you more fully into our lives, God. We come to repent, to change, to turn around and embrace you, our loving creator. We come to hear your word and be renewed by your spirit's movement in and through us. In this time of worship, use your great compassion to cleanse and renew. Encourage honesty from our hearts. Teach us to be wise in our inmost being. Restore in us the joy of your salvation. You are our beginning and our end, the first and the last, the forgiver and redeemer of all things. With humble hearts, we worship you our creator, redeemer, and guide, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the first of our scripture readings. Um, both readings are taken the opening from the opening chapter of the Gospel according to Mark. So I'm reading Mark 1, verses 1 to 5. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make the Lord's paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Amen. According to the Gospel, John the Baptist was called to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. What did this preparation involve? A message. A message that demanded a response. Repent for the forgiveness of your sins. The baptism embodied a physical sign of the cleansing which was analogous to the spiritual cleansing effected by repentance. To repent means to face something, to, to maybe change something. You know, repent means a, a change of direction. What do you need to face and to change? What do I And how did the people respond to John's message? Many went out to see and hear John in the Judean wilderness, and they came forward to be baptized in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. And so, in what ways do you, do I, need to prepare for God's coming into our lives? What ways do we need to prepare? Do we have things to face, to change? Are there things in our lives that block God's movement in and through us? 
Now please join with me. Let us pray. Lord God, I want you to have a greater presence in my life. I confess that either willfully or out of ignorance, there are things about me that keep you at a distance. Help me to be cleansed and ready within so that you will be more welcome. Amen. And now let us sing our hymn, Just As I Am Without One Plea. scripture reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 6 through 11. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he, he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you, I am well pleased. Amen. John's clothing and lifestyle reflect his spirit in relation to him who is coming, Jesus, and that is humility. He redirects any focus from himself onto the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. 
Jesus, however, also recognizes the importance of what John is doing. He chooses to come out, to manifest himself publicly during his baptism by John. The voice from heaven is important in the gospel. It is a public testimony that Jesus is not just a peasant carpenter's son from Nazareth, but the beloved son of God. It also establishes Jesus' authority. Those present and those reading the gospel are called to listen and submit to Jesus. His words and actions will challenge us and make demands on us. But if we take them seriously and follow through, they promise liberation and fullness at the deepest level of our spirits. As you begin your spiritual journey through the next 40 days, are you prepared to make a fresh commitment to follow Jesus? Will you open yourself afresh to think about what that means for you in your life right now? Let us join together now in prayer. Lord God, Teach me to submit to your authority even when it is inconvenient or demanding of me. Please illuminate me as to your will in particular areas of my life and in the different relationships in my life. Give me the courage to surrender them to you. Amen. When we come forward to receive ashes on Ash Wednesday, we are saying that we know we need to repent, to cleanse our hearts, to turn toward God, and to use the season of Lent to correct faults, control desires, face changes that we need to make in ourselves, and welcome God into our lives more fully so that we can be prepared to celebrate Easter with great joy. The ashes also remind us of our mortality. Death is a part of all of our lives, and whether it will arrive in the near or distant future, we must prepare by living according to God's ways, opening ourselves evermore to God's love, compassion, and forgiveness. On this day, you are not able to come forward to receive ashes. Typically, as individuals come forward, Dr. Harris or myself would take the ashes of palm leaves from last Easter, and draw the form of a cross on each person's forehead or on the back of the hand. Though you cannot come forward to be marked by ashes, I invite all of you to use your hand to mark the shape of the cross on your forehead at the same time that I do. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have created us from the dust of the earth. So let these ashes be a sign of our mortality, repentance, and humility. May we remember it is only by your grace and love that we receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You are dust of the earth, beloved of God, called to follow Jesus. And now let us bow down. Let us pray. O ground of our being, sacred presence, the energy who is love, we are seeking you in this time especially in this time, as we begin another journey through the season of Lent. Even as we have some hope for the future, O God, we are still living on certain times in the present. Even as we are making plans for what we will do and can do once the pandemic is over, we are still having to listen and learn and open our hearts to receive in the present. 
What have you to say to us, O God? What is it we need to hear and see, taste, touch, and smell? Where are you leading us in this time of our lives? What do we need to open up to? What do we need to let go? What do we need to surrender over to you? What do we need to accept and learn to live with, with grace and compassion for ourselves, for another? Where do we need to make some real change and find the courage and resolve to finally begin to make it? Where do we need a deeper peace more than ever? Come to us anew, O God. Walk with us this journey. Bring us to the other side, refreshed, renewed, enlarged in heart and soul, grounded in our thinking, our clarity, our commitments, our embrace of who we are as you see us. We pray this way in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray as we journey, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now our concluding hymn, Take Up Your Cross.
created from dust, held together by God's extravagant love, we turn away from sin and journey forward, embracing God's love. And may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore.